you guys saw, you already know that today we're back playing some more Raging Loop, or the last time we made it through our first night as a wolf, and even though we went with the intent to kill, uh, Jemmy got ahead of us and, uh, killed herself for us, which I guess counts as a kill for the wolves, um, so we're gonna see how everybody reacts to that. I'm, I'm not sure how this is gonna go, but, uh, let's see. We really just need to make sure that we can survive the feast somehow, and that's gonna be difficult. I woke up feeling an overwhelming exhaustion. It was 5 in the morning, a time when Kanzo-san was already active. I wanted to sleep some more, but I couldn't let them suspect that I was a wolf based on the idea that I didn't get enough rest. That is true. I mean, now that we know that it's not as supernatural as I thought, like, I think I, I've mentioned that I, I, I assumed that it was like, oh, oh like a wolf is kind of like possessing your body or something, and then, you know, uh, or like maybe it's just giving you properties to be able to like walk through the mist, and I, like, I don't know. Um, but, like, it's, you as a person are in a lot more control than I originally thought, but that also means that, like, you're not sleeping and your body still needs sleep, so, like, yeah, I don't know if the, the mist puts you to sleep in the same way if you're a wolf, um, so it's interesting. But after returning here last night, I changed my clothes, wiped my body, and wondered how I was supposed to hide the costume parts. Yeah, that's true. In the end, I hid it under some newspaper, which was very cartoonish. If the humans found it just like that, I'd feel like the butt of some bizarre joke. A part of me did hope that it would be gone by the time I woke up, though. I feel like... It should. Okay, good. I'd gone to sleep at 2 in the morning and turn up the costume was gone by the time I woke up. Because if it wasn't, then, like, it would be so simple to just, like, search every apartment and then, like, or search every, like, place that people live and then, uh, um, get get the wolves out like that. It'd be too easy. Well, of course it would be. If the costumes remain, you could easily find the wolves by just checking one's homes during the day. Last time when I infiltrated Chammy's room to mess with their guns, I hadn't seen anything like this. Also, if the humans found out there was something so artificial involved in the whole wolfing business, the only two side of the story that the monsters had transformed into humans uh, would have been rendered unbelievable. No matter how much the locals revered Yasumisu's legends, I felt like the feast wouldn't get anywhere without the fear caused by the idea that they were dealing with something supernatural. Uh, was the thing I had seen the first time actually Yasumisu or Tyson wearing the wolf outfit? That's what I'm wondering. It's like, it's built up as this like huge thing. It's like way, it's like twice the size of that building. But maybe that's just there to cause fear, and it actually was just, like, a person. Because, like, the hair and stuff does match kind of, like, what we were wearing. And even though the size doesn't, I mean, we were just scared. And we now know that, like, the, the rumbling, like, the, the thing that was, like, shaking the outhouse, like, I don't think was a giant wolf creature. Um, so that's very plausible. That didn't seem far off the mark. The mist and the darkness made the costumes look extremely convincing. Maybe that was Great Lord Shinai himself, as he appeared in the Red Mist that one time? According to Harishan, that was a god, but... Forget that. Uh, what was Harachan herself? How did she know about my looping? It actually seemed that she even knew about its cause. Possessed by the wolf, by the Okami, by the great god? There were three gods, and that had nothing to do with the uh, Okami-sama being a group of three. It was Great Lushinaya a tripartite gun, and one of the other two was my enemy? What the hell is that supposed to mean? She'd give me a lot of information, but it was all vague and uncertain. Yeah, we got a big sort of hint but i still don't know what to do with it in terms of there being like another god a god that seems to be against us in some way um i i don't really know what to do with that information so just gonna store it in the back of my mind were the mysteries and legends i still didn't know about that made most of my current investigation completely off the mark was i missing or misinterpreting something crucial about the info i already had god 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 this made me want to rely on uh, mommy son tyson or rikaka son's knowledge but this time i was their enemy and had to kill them all Though this time mommy san was in a decent state, so I'd ask her before I got rid of Hashimoto-san. She wouldn't know the true motives behind that. Why is Chibi's face flashing through my mind every now and then? Hmm. Why indeed? I went outside and intentionally avoided uh, looking at the dorm and headed to the plaza. Kanzo-san and Takumi-san were already there, and they told me about Chibi's death. No one else was missing. Then, all that blood was... Oh well, it didn't matter. As we waited in the plaza, we were eventually joined by kairi san She seemed a lot better than yesterday. Had her mind stabilized a bit uh, once she started looking at killing her sons in a positive manner. Um, let's prepare the food, shall we? Yes. Yesterday we had agreed on five things. We would focus on information control and gathering, as in we would avoid having secret talks and instead try to listen in on any that the humans had. We would avoid talking about things we weren't supposed to, like the cause of Chimmy's death. Harachan would uh, contribute to the feast once, uh, then continue being an anti-elder and anti-outsider as possible. Uh, kairi would, uh, declare that she would follow Yasunaga-kun's vote and do it even if he was voting for a wolf. And finally, we would fake our guardians. However, I would be the first to act and only from the third day onwards. Alright, so we already have a plan to fake a guardian. Interesting. The plan was focused mostly on keeping them from looking suspicious or doing something they didn't have to. 
I was apprehensive about trying to get them to go wild like Chippy did and have them kill more humans. After all, I didn't have the trust or charisma for that. Of course, my final goal was my own survival, not theirs. Uh, there would probably be situations in which I had to use them as human shields, or just situations where it was an option. But, don't become... I didn't want to become just a murderer. Hmm. A situation where I, not Haruchan or kairi -san, was the one suspected was the best path to lead us to victory. Also, as an outsider, I had to gain their trust and make them certain I wouldn't betray them at this feast. And on top of all that, I would survive. There had been many unexplained deaths during uh, his turn, but there was no denial that he'd survived as a wolf. I thought about those deaths, especially Yoshitsugu-kun's and Mochi's, many times so far, but I couldn't really believe that Yasunaga-kun was the one who organized them. Um, I mean, Yoshitsugu was... It should have been as simple as, like, he went out at night, and there are creatures. Like, we had to splash water and stuff. Like, there are creatures coming to attack you. And that's very simple explanation as what happened to Yoshitsugu, I think. Uh, Mochi's is definitely less less explainable, but who knows. He didn't get rid of uh, his allies, and he stood up against Tyson, even if not as blatantly as she had when she was human. Personally, I thought uh, that was the right way to handle it. I had to prepare for anything while trying to make sure that all the wolves survived. Anyway, I was silently preparing the food. By the time it was seven, everyone besides Jimmy had gathered in the dining hall. Yasunaga Kun's face was pale. Apparently, she committed suicide right in front of his room. Saying that uh, right after waking up certainly wasn't my idea of a good time. Especially when it was the girl you liked and respected. Moshi didn't seem too phased by her death. He was too busy helping Yasunaga Kun do uh, cope with it. As for Haruchan, uh, Nichan, don't push yourself. Uh, sit here. Do you need a cushion or a blanket? It's fine. I'm all right. Uh, Mochi, do you know any herbs that make people feel better? Oh, uh, guess I'll go look for some garlic or something. Garlic? No, stop. She was overdoing it. When she appeared on natural, wasn't she supposed to act even more shocked than uh, Yasunaga Kun? Feeling uncomfortable about this, I continued preparing the food when uh, Takumi san spoke up. As you already know, someone died yesterday. It's Chemi. Our girl died, and so soon after coming home. There was some silent noise. Kairi san muttered Chemi's name uh, while I created a gloomy expression. Told you. You did, but I think this is weird. Can a human kill like that? It seems animalistic. Huh? Dumbass. <laughs> What's wrong, uh, Oribe san? Nothing. It's just that the only local wildlife that attacks people are boars and moon bears. Did something like that show up? Uh, that ain't it. Uh, you know anything, old man? No. That was the end of the exchange. Had she mastered Blunderwell? Uh, making the wolves say things that, uh, only they could know was a good way for the humans to find them out. But she had fallen for it last time, and there was no guarantee I wouldn't slip up while I talked. I had to make sure I didn't fall into the same situation as she did. But Beast Badgers? Was her body attacked by the bringers of corruption afterwards? Uh, I did take a photo. I'll say it again. Delete it before you leave. If that's necessary, if you wish to see it, go ahead. I don't recommend it to sensitive people. Uh, we're about to eat after all. I really don't think any of you should look. You can tell by her expression that she'd seen it. She looked like she wouldn't touch food the whole day. Whether we looked or not didn't affect our chances of being found out, so I just raised my hand. Me too. He and I were the only ones who looked at it. The others surely believed looking at it would do no good. I took a look at the back monitor of Hashimoto-san's camera, an expensive digital eye uh, model from just last year. Yeah, it was completely different from what I'd seen. It was actually pretty close to the results of the corruption I'd seen in the previous feast. So the corruption does still come for... So it's, it's like, you're not able to tell as much that she did commit suicide, potentially. It was a mountain of chewed and torn up meat and bones. Or is that the picture of the other thing? It made me nauseous, or at least I acted like it did. I was used to it at this point. That's awful. Oh, 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 this. Isn't Wolf? He'd actually said something other than the wolf is coming and even asked something. In response, Kansan just grunted, clearly displeased. He wanted to use this as evidence to hang the wolves in the feast, but there were some problems. One of them was that Chimmy seemed to have died of the corruption. It didn't make sense. Okay, so I think the corruption is actually helping mask the cause of death. So I wonder, gosh, I'm not going to remember how everybody died in previous uh, feasts, but there's probably some times where people died um, to the corruption of somehow, uh, but maybe they, so like, so like, here's the thing, right? So like, what if um, Mamiya, as a wolf in the last time, you know, she was found dead to the corruption, but what if she committed suicide or something like that, and then the corruption is kind of covered up, like what happened there? It seems like the corruption is sort of helping cover up the true details of how somebody died sometimes especially if it's like not inside a room um and so that could explain what happened to chikamochi and the old man you know maybe they did something to themselves um and then the corruption immediately covered it up like i don't know um okay so that's interesting uh chi chan received the corruption yes it appears that she had broken the law of sheltering but <clears throat> there's no way chine uh couldn't have known that uh, she was scared of the stories too indeed how did this happen did she have some business with me? Uh, 
Was that why she was standing in front of my room? Uh, anything come to mind? Nothing. It even felt like she'd been avoiding me. What? Was the idea that she committed suicide about to be glossed over? Was it because they didn't find the gun? That that would be lying right now. It would be dangerous. Um, anyway, we didn't expect this. Let's eat, clean her up, and then talk about what to do next. Uh, wait. <clears throat> I'm not an expert, but shouldn't we preserve the scene of the crime? Uh, would it be bad to not clean it up? To us, it's way more important to get rid of the corpse in front of us than finding whoever did it. I see. Hashimoto-san. Uh, let's just listen to them. Oh, will the cleanup be done by Murasan and uh, Makashima-san? Mm, yeah. Uh, then Yukita and I will watch the dining hall surroundings. The rest of you try not to wander too far away from here. Uh, isn't that for the best? What do you think, old man? Uh, you're the monkey, aren't you? Yes. I'll leave the patrol into you. Uh, bring whatever bites. I see you very well. Hashimoto-san pointed out the necessity for patrols. Uh, came out as a reliable volunteer and became even more trustworthy. <clears throat> On the other hand, he was giving himself a way to talk to Mami-san in secret. Was it his way of separating her, whose identity wasn't confirmed yet, from the rest of the group? I had to calm down. The first part of his move was obviously great, but I wasn't sure about the second one. Hashimoto-san was an active player, but I couldn't tell which of his actions were intentional and which were coincidence. So, uh, anyone who can eat should do just that. I would like to have some too. May I? Ah, uh, yes, certainly. Would you like some to attack me, son? Uh, yeah, of course, I'll have some. Can we really eat this? He had to say that now of all times? How the hell are you saying? I'm not trying to be needlessly considerate. Someone died today because of superstition, at that. That's why I believe we should throw away superstition and act appropriately. Now you talk about. You're suspecting the hag? Oh dear. Unlike how uh, he was so far, Kinoski she spoke those words without any sarcasm. Had he read the mood and chosen to become the resentable but not wrong kind of character? No, he wasn't that considerate. Uh, Yoshitsuku, stop. No such son is wrong this time. If you're going to move around, uh, then shut up. Uh, Mom, you tasted it, right? Something wasn't right here. Why was everyone so sharp so early in the game? Of course. Good, Kari-san understood what they meant. But I think I should try again. Nice, good job. No, I'll try it this time. This is my time. Everyone wanted to suspect me over anyone else, so I had to eat before they did. That was the only way to make them understand that we, I, didn't add any poison to the food. Unfortunately for them, we weren't pulling anything like that this time. I tasted the food and gave everyone a show of me rewashing the dishes, making them finally agree that the food was safe. We then had breakfast. Uh, Mami-san Yasunaga-kun refused. Well, Haru-chan ate quite a lot, actually. And then Takumi-san and Kanzu-san left the dining hall. Yeah, this is weird. I feel like everybody is, like, a little bit different than what they usually are like. Alright, I'll walk around and keep watch. Uh, there might be dangerous beasts here, so you should stay inside as much as you can. But shutting yourselves in isn't good either. Consider this free time, but don't go where you can't hear anyone. I'm supposed to go too, right? Uh, anyone else want to come? Uh, okay, there's just the two of us. I didn't understand what his final words meant. What if accepting the offer was the right choice? Yeah, I feel like maybe we should have gone. Let's clean up. Okay. This is my job, so this was the right thing for me to do, right? I don't know. By the time we finished cleaning up, only five people were left in the dining hall. Thus I offer homage to Shinai the Almighty, so peace may come to pass. Thus I offer uh, Shinai the Almighty, so peace may come to pass. Uh, Mako, your hair is a mess. How come? I shall comb it. No, I don't wanna. Shut up. <laughs> That's always in her praying mood. Because someone was busy caring for Mako, who seemed in a foul mood, uh, Kinosuke-san seemed to uh, want to call out to her, while Yoshitsugu kun just seemed pissed. The journals were outside, while well, Takumi-san, who'd returned for a moment, had left once again. Old man said he's gonna widen his patrol range. He basically said we're doing the feast in the afternoon. Got anything against that? Just like yesterday, no one argued. People needed reasons to not follow an already established process. Yasunaku was the one who'd point that out, and... Alright, Takumi-ni. He looked really drained. Wanna talk, Yasu? Huh? Haru, Chikamochi, I'm borrowing him. If we say shikari san I'm going back to my place. Uh, alright. Sorry I have to be so considerate of him. It ain't that, you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Uh, Anika, you dumbass. Did you forget uh, you were prepared for this shit yesterday? Uh, Yoshi, everyone has weaknesses. If your mom was gone, you'd also... No, that's way too dark. Forget I said that. Uh, you too, kari san No, I was the one who had to say that. I... I'm ready. Talk to me, son. Yes, and I kun left. Alright, let's go grab something nearby. Huh? Okay. You're not scared of the mist? Yeah, I got used to it. Uh-huh. Harachan acting as weird as always left alongside Mochi. This situation was clearly set up by Hashimoto-san. Everyone split up and we were free to have secret talks. What was the purpose of this? Was I just overthinking it? Uh, or were they just taking the opportunity given to them with no ulterior motives whatsoever? Uh, that's enough for now. Fusei she san go have a rest. Uh, there's still time until noon. A rest. Guess I'll go outside then. Everyone left. Uh, don't they know that Yumi's miss is where corruption comes from? There's that too. I'm kind of worried, so I'll have a look. Now, how would a good wolf spend this strange time? I do not know. I couldn't think of anything. Was I a dumbass? Well, I did have some ideas, but they all seemed like bad moves. Traps, basically. 
that I eavesdrop on someone's secret chats. It'd work when it was dark, but during the day, you could see anyone with a whopping uh, few meters, or within a whopping few meters. Could I just join one of their conversations? Wasn't it best to just avoid secret chats in the first place? Was it normal for wolves to be so paranoid? A part of me couldn't help but suspect that Mochi or Hashimoto-san was hiding in this mist. I couldn't see or hear anyone, so my brain perceived this world as empty. Before the unease and loneliness took over, such situations made you feel all-powerful. No one would blame me for anything I did. I could lay down on the road, go commando, shout out that I was a wolf, but all of that was just an illusion. Was this also some sort of trap to get a wolf to do something stupid? Or was this some sort of filter that caught those so paranoid that they actually believed stuff like that? Ah, crap. I just wanted to scream and run around. I wanted to do something no one could predict. I looked up to the sky. Oh, gosh. And suddenly the ground vanished beneath my feet. Whoa. What the heck? Ow. Basically, I'd walked over a small cliff. Oh. Since I was unstable and fell feet first, I'd end up hitting my legs, ass back, and head, uh, head on the ground below. Even if there was no feet, someone could actually die in the mist by accident, and I now uh, knew that better than ever. As I tried to get up, I felt an intense pain in my leg. Ah, crap, it's twisted. This was so stupid. Also, the area below the plaza was clearly out of bounds, so I was breaking the rules here. Though this was an accident, I hadn't planned it myself, so I probably wouldn't draw any more suspicion than I already had. As I stood up... What are you doing? I heard a voice behind my right side. And along with it, something metallic. I instantly raised my hands, but the pain that came over me uh, made me groan. Ow, ow, uh... Um. I nearly fell to my knees out of pain, but I was afraid that he wouldn't tolerate any sudden movements. So I just slightly bent my body. Fell? Yes. Twisted it? Yes. Yeah, sorry, that was clumsy to me. I know the metallic sound followed by a few different ones. I had no idea what they meant, so I just became more tense. I took out the bullets. It's fine. I slowly turned to the right. Kansan now had his gun over his shoulder, not ready to fire. That will be finally relaxed, but my leg still hurt. I might have sprained it. Can you walk? After a little rest. Left side? Yes. Here. To my surprise, he uh, rested the gun in a more comfortable position, then came up to me, crouched, and let me his shoulder. Ah, uh, how nice. He seemed much shorter than me, but uh, that was probably an illusion caused by his posture. We were probably about equal in height. Also, his body was a whole lot more solid than mine. Every part touching me seemed to be covered in hard muscle. I wasn't too fond of the idea of being punched by this beast. Now that I thought about it, all the wolves so far were physical weaklings. They even needed guns to make it through a direct confrontation during the day. Sorry for the trouble. If you're not used to it, don't do it. Okay. Who do you think uh, are the wolves? This wasn't like him either. He really didn't seem like the type of person to ask that kind of thing here of all places, and from the person he trusted least. Uh, from Robo's perspective, it's me. I came at such a suspicious time, you all know nothing about me. You're shady, but that's got nothing to do with being a wolf. A considerate response from him? Something wasn't right here. Dude, something is so off about this entire loop. What was I to do here? Got it. Uh, whoa. Interesting. There's two keys that we're going to need to get through this. And this doesn't seem like it's immediately going to lead to death either, because... Uh, like I said, we need two different keys, and key 20 is also something that is used for a different loop somewhere else. Um, so this is very interesting. Okay, but I guess we're going to talk about Haru's love life. I'm interested to see what that's going to do for me. Oh, Haru-chan. The moment I said that, he stopped walking. It made me put more weight over my left leg, making me groan in, groan in pain. What about her? Uh, his grip seemed to be, uh, become unnaturally stronger. Well, she was really afraid of the mist yesterday, but now she's not. It doesn't seem like her. Nonsense. So, it is like her? Uh, if it's for men and children, women uh, throw away their hang-ups. For a moment, that sounded like sexism, but then I realized it could be interpreted interpreted as criticism of men who often clung to their biases no matter what. That aside, analyzing his words made it clear that Haru-chan's change was because of a man. Oh, Yasunaga-kun. Does she like him? Everyone's saying that. Everyone, huh? That was uh, the countryside for you. Love stories had nowhere to hide. Poor Haru-chan. But Yasunaga-kun was very shocked that Shemi-chan died. Uh, youngin hates, uh, and lovers... Wow, what the heck? Youngin hates and loves her a bunch of trouble. That never changes. He resumed walking. Basically, he was wary of any suspicions, uh, directed to his granddaughter because of some worthless childish soap opera stuff. I can totally understand. The truth was that she was actually a wolf, and she was acting like that because she was overdoing the plan I'd set up, so the suspicions were completely right. In other words, the suspicions could fade even quicker if someone presented an even simpler story as an alternative. Um, hmm? I actually was kind of falling for Chimmy Chan, too. Before the mist came, uh, I asked her if she was seeing someone, and um, she said that she was. I then asked if she was, uh, if he was in some other town, but her answer wasn't clear. But uh, she also said that he was cheating on her, so she was thinking of breaking up with him. What? Where's this coming from? What a sudden change. That true? He gripped my arm really hard, and I grimacing at the pain in my leg, looked straight into his wrinkly face. Hey. Um, it's true that she told me that, but I don't know if she was telling the truth. 
Also, I don't know who the boyfriend is. Could be someone else. After looking at nothing in particular, he turned away from me. I do think Yasunaga Kun's a good kid. He didn't give any sort of response. Alright. I just sown the seeds of malice. Interesting. Once I returned to the dining hall, uh, Taitsan took a look at my injury. We told you not to go outside, foolish child. I'm sorry, it really is dangerous. I'll just stay put now. As you should. Taitsan brought a hand towel from the counter and skillfully bandaged my leg. She even put some weird leaves on my skin. Apparently they help with sprains like this. She then took a wet towel in a plastic bag and applied it to the wound. It was a substitute for ice and it worked better than you think. Despite this being a medical matter, Kinosuke Shi refused to get involved. Orthopedics weren't a specialty, apparently. The empty pride he displayed when saying that actually calmed me down. It was very like him. It pains me to see you injured like this, but I am glad that it does not seem so bad. Uh, sorry for worrying you. Ah, uh, did you break your leg? So you know what broken bones are, huh? Anyway, no, I sprained it. Sprained? Sprained. Strained? <laughs> Was that that bad at talking? Does it hurt? Yeah, a lot. It's a punishment. Punishment? Did I hear that right? It's a punishment. You did something very bad. No, I didn't. What's gotten into you today? I'm sorry. I do not know why, but she's been like this all day long. She really did seem like she was in a bad mood. Has she seen something? I was worried for a moment, but Miku didn't say anything more. She just continued being sulky. What was her deal? I have no idea. Eventually, everyone returned, and this ended up being nothing major. My injury was actually uh, the biggest event. Some were worried, some picked on me, some scolded me for not being careful. The reactions were varied, but it didn't look like anyone suspected me because of it. Yes, Nagakun was in a better mood today. When Harachan and Mochi uh, brought some forage goods, he thanked them with a smile. There was a debate about uh, whether we'd actually eat the stuff. Tazan said something about the corrupt mist. Kiyonosuke Shi considered the possibility of there being poison plants, etc. We chopped it all up, put some salsa on it, and the volunteers, the children Hashimoto-san, the uh, industrious food critic mamiya san ate up. Uh, nothing happened, of course. Because of my injury, no one wanted to go outside anymore. An hour after lunch, Kaza said it was time, uh, and we began the feast. Uh, drink more, it'll hurt less. Half grinning in response, I drank more of the divine sake than usual. As far as I knew, though, alcohol wasn't good for you when you were injured. Thus, the feast started. First of all, uh, let's talk about Chimmy. What happened to her? Got anything, Yasunaga? Uh, Takamisan started out by giving the lead to Yasunaga-kun, who readily accepted it. They probably decided on this during their secret talk. He gave several ideas. Chemi could have accidentally wandered outside on some errand. She also could have not returned home for some reason. And lastly, Chemi could have been killed by wolves who wanted to make it look like the corruption did it. That was when Takamisan mentioned that you couldn't stay awake even if you wanted to, and Yoshitsuko kun vouched for that. With that, everyone agreed that it was unlikely that she'd accidentally gone outside. Wait, yeah, the mist kind of forces you to sleep. How did she even get outside in the first place? That's so interesting. She was able to, like, venture out when usually the mist should prevent that from even happening. Unless she never went back inside. Maybe the mist doesn't knock you asleep if you uh, don't actually go inside your door. Who knows? Uh, their talk was similar to the one we had uh, when talking about Mami-san's death last time. However, unlike this time, uh, it had been a given that Mami-san had returned to her room once. So we reached the conclusion that she, a person who didn't end up sleeping, was a wolf. The idea that Chiemi didn't return back home to begin with had me forming a certain theory. According to Chiemi from the first loop, you could be outside until 8 in the evening. Yesterday, I woke up at about 10 p.m., meaning that anyone in the rooms between 8 and 10 p.m. would go to sleep. Or rather, be forced into sleep. That was when the wolves would be woken up, uh, get in the wolf outfit they were given during the night, and do their deeds. From what I could tell, the humans would stay asleep. That's why they uh, were always killed without putting up a fight. After that, the wolves would return to their homes and be forced to sleep again. Then the wolf outfit would be picked up, and they would wake up the following morning. The Feast of the Omi Purge wouldn't work without the sleep function. However, I knew for a fact that people could die by just being outside their rooms. The first time, it happened to Mami-san and Hashimoto-san, who'd wanted to spend the night in their van, while Yoshitsuku-kun was torn apart because of his own recklessness. Last time, if you excluded Mami-san, a wolf, Yoshitsuku-kun suggested going outside right after everyone went to bed. The first time, he'd probably gone outside long before everyone was forced to sleep. Basically, if you were in a room at a certain time, you'd be forced to go to sleep. That was probably the true meaning behind the shelter taboo. It was just a prerequisite for the main factor in controlling the feast, dreaming, or in other words, sleeping. That was why those who didn't shelter would be eliminated by the bringers of corruption. Looking at it that way, I thought I could see the cunning, logical truth behind Great Lord Shinai. Yeah, okay, that all makes sense. Anyway, the main matter right now is Jimmy. I had no idea how she could survive outside until she committed suicide, but I would just assume she did. Yeah, she would have had to survive for like two hours. I also didn't know if she was waiting for the wolves or just happened to encounter us when, uh, she went, when we went to the dorm. However, it was clear that she'd been outside the whole time. Yes, and I could also believe that and uh, said so to everyone. His own idea that it was actually a murder made to look like a rule violation was dismissed because Jimmy's futon wasn't even spread out in her room. That meant she hadn't even intended to dream last night. Hmm, so you're saying that you don't know why, but Chine's death was like an accident? And that the wolf still haven't killed anyone, right? Yes. After Yasunaga-kun explained his position, Moshi interjected. 
He was a passive participant, but really good at it. Most of his few words were on the mark. He was also the monkey, so no one had to worry about him trying to mislead people. So you're saying that the wolves themselves hesitated to kill? That's what I think. Hmm. That misinterpretation was actually good for us. Though we didn't plan for it, we got rid of a human, and there wouldn't be a hanging today as retaliation. At least, a part of me hope so. I don't think so. Kanzasan argued against it, of course. Why? It's too good for the wolves. Sharp. I see where you're coming from, but we must know what really happened to Chami before we can say that. It's the other way around. Say it, Yasu. Huh? Someone died at night. Normally, it's the wolves doing. Just say it. But Taiba and the old uh, wolfman said that it was a corruption. That's what I thought, but it's difficult. The wolf is coming. Uh, ain't good enough for me. Then how do you explain why uh, Chine's futon wasn't spread out? It don't matter much. Yes, it does. Yasu, shut up. Kansan's words were full of irritation, if not anger. It brought a change to everyone's expressions. I was the only one who could see this rationally. After all, I was the one who caused this. I presented him with an unproven personal matter between me and a deceased girl, maliciously giving him several ways to view it. One of them led to the conclusion that Yasunaga-kun was a dirty cheater who played both Chemi and Haro-chan. Uh, I led Kansan to that convenient idea without putting myself at any risk. Mmm. I was expecting us to avoid today's lynching to begin with. Thus, I would instead gain their trust by uh, it just leading them to the truth. Okay, there's another possibility. Chemi-chan could have committed suicide. The idea shocked everyone, but it was actually easy to explain. It was true, after all. Someone who commits suicide wouldn't prepare the futon, and since the suicide was enough bloodshed for the night, the wolves didn't kill anyone else. It was an answer that let people combine the idea that the wolves didn't kill, but planned to. Then why was her body in that state? What kind of suicide leads to that? The wolves saw her body after she committed suicide and just left it there, letting the local beasts have it. Does that make sense? We got beasts that can do that? In this area, old man? He wanted to prove that the wolves were out for blood, but his knowledge as a hunter denied the possibility of there being such beasts here. So I helped him out. This isn't something that I wanted to consider, but it might have been a monster, or maybe a god. Think about it, there's definitely something that brings the corruption. There were a lot of dead dogs on the first day, right? If there was a being that could do that around this area, it could easily find Chami's body and do the same. It could be Yomi Vito, Badger, or a real wolf. Well, uh, it is true that there might be something spreading the corruption. Oh, how terrifying. Who says she's, uh, son? Please don't needlessly frighten people. That's not my intention. I actually do think there's an unidentified menace around these parts, and we should be wary of it. It could be the reason why the corpse was destroyed. Should we keep that in mind? Well, you're not wrong. Wait, even if that was a suicide, there's no proof that the wolves wanted to kill, right? Also, I don't think that Chami is the type to commit suicide. Yeah, there's no way she would kill herself. Please calm down, everyone. So he joined in. How would he handle this? Uh, can I give my opinion? Go ahead. Of course. Mm. I might not look it, but I used to be a cameraman in a war zone, so I've seen many gruesome things. Seriously? Yes, and I'm not an expert, so I can't be sure. But it looked to me like her head was scattered in a strange way. Some pieces even reached high uh, up the wall. I even took a photo. It looks like a gun wound to me. A large gun at that, and from point blank range even. Sharp. A few people looked at Kanzu-san. It was a fitting re reaction, considering uh, he had a gun and he grunted in response. Oh, I don't believe that has anything to do with Makishima-san. Uh, what are you getting at? The only real situation when blood and other things can fly up high, uh, or fly high up, is when someone puts a gun in their mouth and shoots it. It'd be pretty hard to do with a large gun. Uh, a murder would more likely uh, be at an even or downward angle. That makes me think that Fusei Shikun is right and it was a suicide. Did she have a gun? No. Not that I know of. Never heard if she did, but she said she's got a hunting license. Huh, seriously? Then she could have had a shotgun. Uh, she had guts. Uh, if I was going to have someone go hunting, it had been her. Kansan tone uh, grew lower as he displayed an unexpectedly high opinion of her. The story that she was being cheated on must have hit even harder than I thought. Uh, Chemi really did have a place here. Uh, she must have gotten a license because she thought to herself. That could only mean that the gloomy talk from last time. Uh, but there's no place in me here. It was just nonsense from a wolf. Hmm. Wait, that doesn't make sense. Uh, why didn't she have a gun then? We didn't find anything in her room either, not even bullets. I was curious about why there was no gun too. But there were no bullets either, or shells. They were uh, with the rest of her stuff last time. Did they mess up while searching or something? The room was unlocked so anyone could go in, right? Right. Uh, I believe we should fear the worst, that the wolves took both the gun and the bullets. That was when Mami san took over. I do understand that it doesn't make complete sense to fear a gun that, for all we know, might not exist, but I believe we should check everyone's rooms. Hmm, I'm not sure if they would hide it somewhere so obvious. What do you think? I think it's important to show that we're willing to search. Let's do it. Fine by me. Wait, I don't think you should look around my house for such a reason. There might be old hunting rifles that had nothing to do with this. Do you have something to hide? Hmm, honestly, I don't think he'd take a gun with him, and probably already has one or two, and he's got his fine. Chikawachi, you... But he's not wrong, in fact. The very idea of taking something like that from a corpse is making me nauseous. Ha, chicken afraid of corpses, huh? I heard that's why you can't make it as a doctor. No, I... Stop it, Yushitsuku. No, Sato-san, please forgive him. 
so he really was afraid of corpses. Man, the guy uh, sure was hard to make use of. Still, there was no reason for us to be afraid here. After all, we weren't the ones who took the gun. I could, well, why was that, why did that scare me? It was such a sharp transition from like, <laughs> usually it like fades in, but there was like no fade. It was just th threw up on screen like a uh, like a jump scare. I can only assume it was Great Lushina again. See it like there, it transitioned out of it. But when it th was thrown up on screen, it just threw up like that. Oh my gosh. Thanks, Nashimoto san. Uh, just about everyone now agreed that Chami had killed herself with a gun. Proof was a very important thing. The people of Yasumizu really had to realize that by cleaning up the corpses right away, they made it harder to find out the truth. Even Yasunaga Kun accepted that Chami had committed suicide. He was now muttering something like, Chine, why? Kanzan looked at him with extremely intense eyes. If you connected the story from before with the suicide, you could assume that it was the result of the love triangle drama. After all, she committed suicide in front of Yasunaga Kun's uh, room. With that said, Otakumi san spoke up again. So, what do we do today? Are we hanging or not? After a moment of silence, she wasn't killed by the wolves. That's why we shouldn't lynch anyone. We said we'd hang if someone died. It wasn't the wolves. Um, may I say something? What is it? I believe that Sirizawa-sama was acting on the spider's mentality. Huh, what do you mean? She took the corruption in herself. She protected us by acting like the spider. Why isn't brave as she is, Sirizawa-sama could easily do something like that. Uh, tell us more. Last night, she might have drawn her own blood to protect those with guardians among us. She might have committed suicide after witnessing the arrival of the wolves. Uh, Chi-chan, she might have been violent, but she was honest and gentle, too. It ain't that. chi just had guts. Then, were the wolves really planning to kill her? Sure you're not overthinking it? Hmm, but honestly, I can't think of any other, uh, case in which chi would commit suicide. Uh, Harne, if chi didn't, um, know what to do, she'd shoot someone else before herself. She knew exactly what she was doing here. And she always stood up to protect us in school, didn't she? chi uh, what do we do? It's looking like they will want to hang someone today. I would want to vote on it, at least. Hashimoto-san! We must survive. This might be necessary to accomplish that. But, if that was really her reason, then Sirizawa-san uh, didn't have a guardian. The snake must still be alive, and he or she has information for us. And if everyone here can band together against the wolves, then the situation is very different from how it was yesterday. I'll still listen to my conscience and vote against killing, but I'll accept the results. Alright, we'll raise hands for it. Hmm. Alright, anyone who's uh, voting on who to hang, raise your hands. Let's see, how many? The old wolf guy, Yamawaki-san, Kanzo-san, Kinoshi, Takumi-san, Rikaku-san, Moshi, uh, Yoshizuku-kun, and I raised my hands. Okay. I think that's more than half. The only ones who didn't were Kairi-san, Yasunaku-kun, Haru-san, Miko, and the Journos. Moshi. Hmm, sorry, Yasun, but I feel like I gotta invent Shine. Oh, really? If she really wants that, uh, she could've showed up in her dreams or something. Yeah. Nine against six. Choose who to hang. Alright, I think, uh, I've been waiting for, like, a good, um cliffhanger to end this off on and i don't think a uh, big one is coming up so i think i'm just going to end it off here uh because this is about as close as i'm going to get we don't know who we're going to hang but it's going to be somebody and hopefully not us i wonder if we're going to have to do some you know some uh convincing to make sure that we're not the ones to get hang hanged um but we'll see how easy it is for us to avoid that or not and um yeah hopefully you're enjoying and looking forward to more if so let me know but i'll see you on the next time so till then peace out